So this is me going live. I'm going walking up to the Jesus field in Glastonbury on a lovely February evening. The sun's going down, it's still warm. I'm just going to share this with you. This is Silver Street I'm walking up. So I'm going to turn the camera around until we get up there when I start talking. So this is Silver Street. It looks over the back of the abbey there. You can see the ru abbey ruins there as we walk along. The whole town itself is actually built around Glastonbury. It's built around the abbey. Filled with myth and magic. But a very special place, you know what I mean? You go three miles down the road, it's completely different. Uh, forgive me if I uh, take the camera looking in the wrong way, because I'm, I'm not great uh, with a selfie stick. I'm new to this. I will show you my algae stick. That's my algae stick. goes everywhere with me. On one of these walks in the evening, we may actually just put this camera on the tripod and use the bells to go on a vision. All depends how wet and muddy it is up there today. So the abbey itself was destroyed by Henry VIII during the Reformation. And the, the abbot of Glastonbury Abbey was called Richard Whiting and he was taken to the top of Glastonbury Tour where he was hung, drawn and quartered. So even though the abbey is a place of healing now, there's some very dark histories, and I've mentioned this before, that the Isle of Avalon was actually the Isle of the Dead, where they brought dying and wounded kings to be healed and passed over to the other world, which is what Somerset or the Summerlands means, by the high priestesses and the priests that dwelt in this place. It's only in modern times that We've now started to live here. And now it's an accumulation of spiritual and mystical people who come here during the winter months for magic and wisdom. And in the summer months, people come here for healing and guidance. We're just getting to the cusp of that now, the spring times. And you can feel the air changing and the magic around changing, getting ready for the, the new healing season. A lot of these houses up in front of me are very Georgian period, which once again when Glastonbury was very famous as a, a healing, not a spa town, very different, but a spiritual healing place. Bath is a, a spa town. Wells, hence its name, has lots of healing waters. They've always, always been in conflict with, with Glastonbury itself. Sorry about the traffic as we get up on the road, it's that time of night. I'm going to be walking. I mean, you never know, I might meet somebody I know. Who knows? But this is the uh, first time I've done this. This is probably not as exciting as you thought it was going to be. I didn't realise it would take me this long. We're going to cut across the road now. See, look at the houses, a lot of old Georgian houses during the Regency period. It was actually 1751. You can research this, was the glorious summer of Glastonbury. When a local man called John Chambers has a visitation from Christ. And he was told that if he drank the well water from the chain spring for seven Sundays on a trot, he would be healed. So he did what Christ had told him in the vision. And after the seventh Sunday, he went to his doctor and the doctor said, he was healed of his asthmas. I'll just look up there, none of you know what mistletoe is. There it is, growing in a tree. It has a symbiotic relationship with the plant, doesn't harm the tree, but it grows. It's magical, mystical, not only the Norse, the Celts as well, sacred to the Druids. It can be used for a lot of things, but to some people, it can uh, induce anaphylactic shock, so you have to be very careful and do a skin touch on people. Anyway, John Chambers, story about him being healed by the waters of the chain spring was then posted in the Bristol Gazette and so by March there was a thousand people camped around the springs in Glastonbury at the chain gate by June there was 20,000 people 
which for a small market town at that time must have been horrendous. And the chain gate itself was covered with crutches and glasses and all the things that people have used as signs of their ailments that are now healed. So a bit like Lourdes in France. But the mayor at the time, he was called Thomas White, which is strange enough, is the same name as my son. Winning league with the people of Bath and Wells and London. And they built the pump house over the chain spring and stopped the common and poor folks taking the healing waters. And it was bottled and sold in London to only the wealthy. And strangely enough, his healing powers diminished. But it did its trick. Those peasants and beggars moved away from Glastonbury and it went back to being a sleepy Somerset market town once more. And that is the, the story of Glastonbury right the way through history. It rises and it falls. We're very lucky, or I'm very lucky at this time, to be born in a period of where what I do and what I speak of and how I connect to people and help people is seen as a, one of the healing crafts. 70 years ago, I probably would have gone to prison for what I did. 70 years in the future, it may be the same. But now these mystical paths are having a renaissance that's helping us all. You can tell I'm going uphill because I'm getting out of breath. Well, I did this to uh, get out and about and show you the evening. I'm always doing my visions in the early morning because that's the time I travel. So this in front of us is Chalice Hill, another one of the sacred hills of Glastonbury. And it's strange enough when you're in the abbey, you can't see the tour because Chalice Hill is in the way. Whether that's by purpose or design, we don't know. And the abbey itself is also built upon one of the holy wells, right in the middle of the crypt. But it's again, it's covered, you can't go there. The common person can't drink those waters. So and then it's like, just like the, the town has its seasons, so do the wells. One will be healing in one century, another in another time. How this work is a question only spirit can answer. So we're walking up to Bushy Coon Farm. I'm sort of going to give you a bit of a walking with wizards tour. Tell you about the same stuff that I do when I walk with my clients. So this does get steeper and steeper. But this is where uh, Belte, which is May Day, we have the the maypole, where the, the phallus of the maypole is planted into Mother Earth to give birth to the summer. It's a beautiful day where the women all wear red and the men wear green and young couples jump the bonfires, leaving the past behind and making wishes for the future. <sighs> Blimey, I'm not as fit as I was. Hopefully the more I get out, the more uh, this will get easier and easier as the summer goes on. But I'm getting old now, not as young as I was. We all chase that youth. We have to accept our age as well. And what we give up for fitness, hopefully we attain wisdom. So some very special trees up here as well. There's one when we come to the top called the Hern Tree. Well, that's warm me up. I put my sheepskin on when I first started this walk because I thought it'd be cold. Right. Thanks for some of the questions. I can't really see them, they're bouncing up and down. But I will answer any and give them likes when I'm back and settled in my car. Okay, it's levelling out now. Okay. It is a beautiful evening. It's a town below us, where I've walked up from, and we're just coming in sight of the tour. This beautiful old tree over there, that's the Hearn tree. 
and many years ago I had one of my initiations there that's one of the portals the gateways a lot of my clients I walk with they're drawn to this place and that tree without even knowing the stories they just feel the energy of that grandfather tree and the healing energy it possesses so I'm going to take you to the beginning of the fairy lane and another time I'll take you a bit further so eventually in videos I have my full walking with wizards tour around Avalon on video because not everybody's going to be able to get to Glastonbury or to Stonehenge or to Avebury or to Cornwall hopefully on my little videos and stories I can share some of the magic with you good evening hello girl I'm filming but I'm out of breath at the same time so it's obviously not that impressive <laughs> Evening. Evening. Okay, probably that bit might have to be edited out. <laughs> but it is a lovely evening and people are out on the land. It's a very different healing. There's a, I once learnt a long time ago from a druid that after four o'clock, trees give off all the energy that they don't need for in a day. So if you stand with your hands, with your face, around a tree you can absorb that energy and help heal you so this is one of my favorite views of the tour here the sun's going down i was up here for the for the super blue bull blood moon the other day blue moon the other day and it was really was magical but like i said in avalon the tour itself the very top of the tour is just one of the many mystical and healing places so all the dog walkers are out I will try and take you to the Jesus field and that's where I'll stop we'll just pause there for a moment and take in the energy of the land it's called the Jesus field because it's the one place in Glastonbury where people have experienced Christ more than anywhere else and whether that golden light that dwells there is Christ to you, angelic energy, star masters, star beings, God, Allah, it's all your individual choice. This is the, the fairy lane. I'm going through the sty. I'm walking along the back. And as you see, that's a few years ago, me and my friend Tip, Tim, collected mistletoe from the tree there and we came and got it and we spread the white sheet out on the ground below because it's not supposed to touch the ground and then that's what we use at Christmas nowadays it's harvested and sold but I don't think the traditions are completely upheld but that's what part of this path is is remembering the ancestors and remembering what they did why they did it and trying to honor it in our lifetimes the sun's dipping down now. So this is the fairy path. You can hear that, I heard a raven then. It's a very different sound to a crow. There you go, you hear it? Sounds like oh, oh. But up for me on top of the tour there's two birds, there's Hoogwin and Moonin, the male and female raven who dwell up there. Not ravens, they're crows, they're really big crows. But the ravens come around, they're always battling for supremacy. But I, I connect and I work with the God Odin. Not many people know about him. But he's just the All Father God, the Wise One. And his, his symbol is the raven. Two ravens, Hugin and Moonin, thought and memory. And that's what life's about. There's an old, old saying that says, I worry that Hugin will not return when he sends his ravens out each day, which means thought, but he says, I worry more that Moonin will not return. And that's actually about losing our memory, 
because all our life is is an accumulation of the thoughts and experiences we have it's just like Alzheimer's when you're gone when your mind's gone you're already gone you've let Elvis you've left the building so we try and keep our mind active and do the best we can to tune into that so this is the Jesus field this is a really beautiful place with a really soft golden energy and even on a cold February evening it's got that peace and stillness and I'm going to put my algae and stick in the ground for a while and we'll get that in there and I'm just going to go back so we can see that and the tour and I'm just going to pause for a moment and hope you can take all this in scan the tour, go up round and you can see the different trees around here and the different shapes. And you look at the far corner over there, the really twisted tree like with vortex energy. All of them have some sort of meaning and message for us. I talk to the trees every day. So just take a few moments to take this in. All right. Bless you all. So this is live, the evening songbirds. And if you look really carefully at the top of the tour, you can see pilgrims making their way up there for the sunset. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. It's been a pleasure. I've finally I've got my breath back. So I'm waiting next time where I'll do it a bit more of the Walking with Wizards. Bless you all.